Welcome to MicroCap Explosions. This is Mario Skoniecny, and uh, I'm talking with Ladislav, the wandering investor today. And we're going to talk about um, international real estate and uh, how to uh, improve or maybe pay a little bit less in capital gains. So, Ladislav, thanks for joining me. Yeah, real pleasure to be on your channel. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, so I've been watching some of your videos and... Uh, uh, you you are into international real estate, right? So Correct. let's 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 talk about that. What, what what's so special about international real estate? You know, how can people benefit from it, and why should they do it? Yeah. So looking because a lot of your subscriber base is out of the U.S. and Canada. The the reality is that it's hard to find better returns internationally than you would in the U.S. or in Canada by using leverage by getting a mortgage, etc. And the markets in, in North America are very dynamic. They have a lot of data. Um, there's a lot of liquidity, et cetera. But what international real estate offers is diversification and not just diversification away from your own jurisdiction, uh, but also jurisdiction, in, but also diversification in terms of sometimes even obtaining a second passport, obtaining a second residency, and then always having a plan B somewhere else for yourself and for your family if things were to take a wrong turn wherever you're from mm, okay and then what kind of properties do you like to invest in so I've, I've done deals in many different types of properties in the middle east in africa in eastern europe in the balkans in western europe and in, in the us as well I like typically to go for residential properties because it's a market that I understand. Sometimes I buy and hold long term for the rental income. Sometimes I buy, renovate and flip. And sometimes I do deals with developers. So it really depends on the on the market dynamics. So typically I go to a country where I believe there's an interesting macro story. I spend a few weeks or a few months on the ground to understand what's happening in the country. And then depending on this, if I see interesting opportunities, then I decide how am I going to play this market? Now, well, what made you want to start with it? Like, what was the trigger point? Because I, I traveled my whole life. Um, and so I worked in corporate up to the age of 30. I was working for Nestle. So my last role was in charge of the, the dairy business for Nestle for a few West African countries. So I was sitting on the executive board of Nestle Ghana. And at the age of 30, I left and went on a big road trip. So I drove from Oman to Paris by car through all of Iran, Armenia, Georgia, Turkey, um, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, a whole bunch of Eastern European countries. And along the way, I saw all of these opportunities and I thought, hey, why not try to exploit them? Because the reality is, and that's why people use a, a service such as yours at Microcap Explosions, is that when you work full time, you do not have essentially time to manage your own finances. And it gets kind of brushed aside and then you end up with suboptimal returns. So, but when you actually dedicate yourself full time to it, then you actually find better opportunities. Or you also use services such as yours uh, that where you do the work for people. Okay, but now let's say Let's say you want to buy a residential property, whether it's a single unit or I don't know, maybe an apartment. What, what kind of uh, like, e e assuming you want to do it for rental income, uh, what kind of returns can you expect, and how how would you finance some of these opportunities? Mostly overseas. As soon as you start investing overseas outside of your home country unless you're very wealthy and have access to your own credit lines in your own country where your personal banker is willing to give you credit line to invest overseas the reality is those are cash markets so you go with your you know whatever 200 300 dollars and you just buy the apartment outright there are some financing options but typically they come at a vast premium to what locals pay so if you go to you know spain or portugal you can get non-resident loans but you'll be paying like three four sometimes five percentage points higher in interest rates so it just doesn't make sense in any way whatsoever in some countries you can get developer financing 
whereby you pay for an apartment over, you know, two years, three years, sometimes even 10 years. Okay. But, um, so let's say, let's say I invest a hundred thousand cash and it's unlevered. What kind of cash flow can I get or cap rate? I know, so, I know it differs. I know it differs from different countries, but like, you know, I better get something better because why would I bother to go there? Yeah, well, you know, that's a very good question. Um, it, for example, if you go to Western Europe, typically you would get gross yields. So before expenses and property taxes, et cetera, of about 5%, 5 to 6%. And then net, you'd be making 2 to 3%. So Western Europe, absolutely not interesting from that point of view. If you want to go to markets with slightly higher yields, then you go to Eastern Europe or you go to some places in the Balkans. There you can get net after all expenses, local taxes, allowances for vacancy, for maintenance, et cetera. You can, you can get three to 4%. And then there are markets, I mean, Ukraine up to before what happened, um, you can get 10% net. And that was the most interesting market in the world, but it was for a reason because risk was high. And then right now there's a Medellin in Colombia where you can get seven to 10% net after all expenses, local taxes, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and then how, who, how are you going to manage these things like from far away? So typically you get local property managers to do it, but that's also one of the issues it's sometimes you know managing the property manager is is, is a job um so it, you need to invest also in markets where there's talent it's a mistake that i've made myself in the past where i bought in in areas where the numbers made sense etc cetera, etc cetera. but then my property manager ended up messing up with me and I, I just had issues finding an alternative so when you're from far away then you need to to budget extra money for that for that property manager so really investing overseas from a North American perspective is more about diversifying. It's about you know, having money away from the, your jurisdiction. It's money that is harder to seize if someone sues you. Um, you get also currency diversification away from the dollar if that's what you're looking for. And also residency and citizenship in some cases. So we talked about Medellin in Colombia. If you invest at least $160,000 in real estate in Colombia, then you're entitled to an investor visa, which is pretty much a almost a permanent residency in the sense that you just need to go there every two years to maintain that residency and you have the right to to live, et cetera, in, in Colombia. So, so, now, so now we're talking about saving on your capital gains. That, so if you move to some countries, so for example, if you move to Montenegro, so buying real estate in Montenegro, so Montenegro is a little country south of Croatia, capital gains taxes are taxed at 9%. So if you move to Montenegro and you become a tax resident of Montenegro, but this doesn't work to US for US people because US people always have to pay taxes wherever they live. But if you're Canadian, for example, and you become a non-tax resident of Canada, and you then become a tax resident of Montenegro, you would be paying only 9% taxes on capital gains. Or if you move to Dubai, you would be paying only 0% on capital so, gains. On capital gains. So for stock market investors, um, I invest in stocks myself. One of the easiest ways to really improve your returns is by minimizing the capital gains that you pay. So many people are of the view that we are entering a phase where there will be more and more inflation. Um, war is inflationary. Then it means that capital gains taxes in many ways become a tax on inflation. So basing yourself or structuring your affairs, if I can put it this way, in a way that you minimize your capital gains taxes is going to be a crucial aspect of managing your own money. 
Hmm. Interesting. So you, you mentioned a little bit about you, you also invest in stocks. I, uh, I saw I saw a video you did with someone talking about Russian stocks. Uh, do, do you have any, um, uh, you know, thoughts on the Russian stocks right now? Are you doing anything yourself? Well, I mean, I got burned, so <laughs> I got in a bit too early. Um, I got in when they were really cheap after Russia one took over the the two republics and then two after it started the invasion. Now I can't even trade them, so I can't really buy them. I can't. I I could sell them, but I'm certainly not selling them at this point. They're priced like cheap call options, <clears throat> so I don't sell cheap call options. I keep them. You know, it's just part of the part of playing the game. So did On they? The uh, hand, did they? Did they block all of your uh, brokerage accounts that you cannot buy? So the ones that were listed in London and Germany. I cannot buy more, but I can sell them. And the ones that I bought in Moscow directly, I'm not allowed to sell them. Can you buy on the Moscow exchange? My broker, so Russia doesn't allow me to sell it and my broker doesn't allow me to buy them either. But if I were to, technically, if I were to open a brokerage account in Russia, I, I could still buy it, but, that, but then not sell. Uh, but then that would imply having to take a flight to, to Moscow, which is not very doable right now. Right. Okay. So uh, give me an idea of like two or three of these Russian stocks that you still hold and how cheap they are in relation to maybe cash in the bank or cash flow. I honestly, I even stopped looking. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, they're, they're down like 95, 96%. They're, they're dirt cheap. They're, they're extremely cheap. They're, they're priced like call options at this point. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, would you mind sharing the names of couple? Yes. Um, so a few that I find interesting, and this is absolutely not investment advice. Chances are you will lose your, your shirt if you ever manage to buy them. So Ross Agro, um, agricultural company in Russia, Lukoil, Gazprom, Rosneft, Fosagro. So I own all of those. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so I will link uh, your YouTube channel in the description below. Uh, is there any other way that you would like uh, people to be able to find you if they have any questions? Yeah, and I, I think I'd, I'd like to add something on... Um, on the importance of having a, a potentially even a second passport and a second residency for stock market investors, because the, the reality is we're extremely dependent on these platforms. So let's say you have an, an account with Schwab or an account with IB. And if for whatever reason, the government decides to block your access, you're finished. So we saw what happened in, in Canada and I don't wanna get into politics. All I'm trying to, to say is that in, in Canada, People did something that the, the government disagreed with, okay? And then the government essentially froze the accounts of these people, so bank accounts, et cetera, et cetera. So then people were completely locked out of their own money. By having a second citizenship, you can have a complete different plan B, or even in some cases, a second residency, you have a plan B for your finances. So it means that you have a second brokerage account, you have a second bank account, in a different country so that if you get frozen out of one you still have access to the other and your life is not your financial life is just not finished so that it, so it means that there isn't one government that is completely holding you by the i won't say the word mm, okay so right. in terms of following me so like you mentioned my youtube channel the wandering investor and also my website thewanderinginvestor.com and i have a free mailing list that i encourage people to fall to subscribe to and then i post updates as i travel around the world and look at investment and immigration opportunities